Hello there, welcome to the wall here. I've got Randy Bueller, I'm Marshall Sutcliffe, and it's time to watch Jacob Wilson. And let's see what he came up with for his first booster draft here at Pro Tour Carnes of uh, Dragons of Tarkir. Let's see what he came up with his first one. You can see uh, Jacob is taking a look at his opening pack. It's a little hard to see there for us. I did see Anticipate in there, that's a card I like. And uh, has he pulled forward his main pick yet? I can't really see these cards. There you go. And it looks he like got? he's open Dragon Lord Ojitai here, Randy. So oh, one of pick. the uh, Elder Dragons and uh, not a difficult decision here for, for yeah, a player. He is going to just windmill slam Dragon Lord Ojitai. Now the question is, can he actually be blue-white or can he splash it? Now blue-white's a viable deck. I've played it a few times already in the oh, format. I think blue-white's a great deck. And I, think I think it is too. This is a format that lends itself to two-color decks. Like your goal is to find a two-color deck that isn't being drafted near you and then to draft that. So he certainly would like to be blue-white. What he really wants to do is read the pack. Sandcaster Ma Sandcrafter Mage is a fine pick here. Yeah. I mean, Ruthless Death Fang, if he was blue-black, would be awesome. It's spectacular in the exploit deck, but he'd rather be blue-white now, so he's going to look at the Sandcrafter Mage, I would think. Looks like he's got a Silumgar Butcher on his, uh, on his eye there, too. He seems to have pulled that up to the front, too. It's a good pack for the exploit out. deck, blue-black exploit deck, which I think coming in, you said this in the open, is one of the decks that people know is super powerful and would love to be able to draft. Yeah, it, it's sort of one of the more obvious decks, I think. If, if you look at the format from a big picture, the, that deck just sort of forms itself. Yeah. It gets a lot of help from the Fate Reforged pack as well. Yeah, and when you get it, it's great. That's right. But you're often competing for multiple people at the, in the draft for it as well. So there's an Encased in Ice and an Atarka Ifrit. Atarka Ifrit, I think, one of the more underrated cards coming in here, Randy. Though, moving into red for Jacob Wilson is not really what he wants to be doing. No, this is a disappointing pack for him, for sure. Yeah, this isn't. This, this pack is really a bummer for him. It looks like he's considering taking in Case in Ice as a powerful sideboard option. I like that pick, actually. I mean, he wants to be able to stay in blue-white if he, if he, if he all can. That's a perfectly reasonable, only a sideboard card, but that works. It's a light walker in this pack. More, more toys for the exploit deck that he's not really in. There's that other Silumgar Butcher. You see him move that to the front. He's kind of wondering, you know, is it too late to move in? Yeah, there's also a good dual Lurker sitting back there, which is a serviceable card. Yeah, I think Lightwalker's probably better for blue-white than that. Do you like Lightwalker better? I do, I do. I feel like, especially he's already got a Sandcrafter, Sandcrafter Mage. Mage. Like, turn two Lightwalker into turn three Sandcrafter Mage is just a great opening. Yeah, that's going to be one of those But he uh, goes Gadul Lurker, so... I think Gadul Lurker stands better on its own. Uh, fair, fair. Lightwalker's a bit of a combo card. Spellfist is solid. The blue-white deck really wants to be spell-focused, if it all can. So getting something like the Elusive Spellfist is, is nice. Surge of Righteousness another reasonable sideboard card. Yeah, I, I think I like picking up a Spell Fist here for, for Jacob. It's a solid card. Like you said, you know, it can be a spell-based deck, especially abusing rebound spells to, uh, to get multiple Precisely. triggers on cards like Precisely. that. Now, it looks like uh, Jacob decided to take the sideboard card there, though. It is the more powerful card. It, it is. is only going to come up in a couple of matchups. Yeah. Now, the real thing that's going on here, I think, for Jacob is trying to understand, are my colors open? I really feel like more than any format in recent memory, this draft format is about reading signals, about getting into the color, especially, remember all those Fate Reforged rares that we were all so excited to open a couple yeah. of months ago, right? Now people actually pass the good ones when they're not in their color. So. It's nice to get into an underdrafted color so you can get the synergies out of dragons, but it's particularly nice if you can get, you know, three, four cracks at a Fate Reforged Rare. Yeah, these packs have been very disappointing, though. He took Mystic Meditation in that last one. That Anticipate is, is, is reasonable here. Yeah, I was talking about the oh, last pick. Oh, there's a strong arm monk, too. The, la the last pick was a real nothing. This, this one he's going to get a, a, a strong arm monk or a Anticipate, which are both solid, very solid pickups. Yeah, I see the Anticipate in the front of the deck. Strong arm monk is really good. I mean, it is five mana, but if you You've got the sort of blue-white aggressive deck with all the rebound spells. So powerful. He went to Anticipate. Yeah, he went in for Anticipate. He's, he, I think he thinks himself a little bit more in a controlling route. One of the cards that I think that, wow, the Cylindar Butcher's there. One of the cards that I think what? that Jacob's really going to be looking for out of the next pack is a Student of Ojitai. I think he's going to want to pick up a few of those if he can. It goes sure. really well in this blue-white deck. 
and territorial wow. rock. So sticking to his Stone guns. Stonegar Butcher just floats. Yeah. Yeah, we just watched Huey's draft, and he identified black as an underdrafted color, and you can see how he got paid off, right? That's right. People There's... are sticking to their lanes, and so if you read the signals right, if you're Billy Jensen, get into black, get past late butchers. Yeah, Jacob Wilson sticking very much. I mean, the payoff is quite big for him. He can get hooked up in this next pack, and Dragonlord Ojata is one of the biggest bombs that he can get, and there's a ruthless death fan yeah, and we still saw floating that around. It's all the way to the, Huey. Yeah, I think, oh, he doesn't take it here? No. Oh, that's interesting. I would probably speculate and take it, not to try to move into blue black. He's That ship has sailed, I think, right. for Jacob, but you can splash it if you pick up a couple of dual lands out of the Fate Reforge pack, and it's decent. Not that he can really do much with it here. Yeah, your nemesis. nemesis is one that's unlikely to make the cut, but always possible if, if it comes to it. Yeah, it's interesting. I think that Jacob knows the most open color in his seat was black. But he started with Ojitai. I mean, look at the, there's a dutiful attendant still in the pack yeah. here. By far the most open color. We knew that from, you know, if you watch Jensen's draft, that was pretty clear. You can kind of see it here, too. Yeah, another negate. He's picked up two of those. Negate seems to have moved up on people's list a little bit as far as mm -hmm. main deck playability. I think the first one is, is pretty good in this format, where traditionally it was you know, maybe borderline. Wow, the white really isn't super open here. No. I mean, he didn't want to give up on Dragon Lord Ojitai, and it's hard to blame him for that. But that Sandcrafter Mage was a second pick, and after that, he got what? Surge of Righteousness. <laughs> and Territorial Rock. Yeah. That's it. White yeah. is not... I mean, the Strong Arm Monk did come through. It did, but he didn't take it. You know, this is interesting. I, I wonder if, if Jacob is supposed to be in blue-black, the deck that we were talking about, mm -hmm. and just trying to look for the option to splash, splash Ojitai, Ojitai if possible. Yeah. Sometimes you have to give up on it. It depends on which dual lands get opened out of the uh, Fate Reforged pack. But. Yeah, I think if he could go back and do the pack over again, I think that's what he would do. Yeah. But it's the so hard. The signals were there. But, like, when do you give up on Dragon Lord Ojitai? That's the tension, right? If he hadn't started with a bomb blue-white rare, I mean, even if it had only been a Cunning Breezekeeper or something, you know, maybe it's easier to give up on it, but... It's true. It is It is a strong pull, and Dragon Lord Ojitai is one of the best cards in the format. Exactly. <laughs> so you can see why he would want to stick with it. Palace Familiar, Sandcrafter Mage. Oh. Ooh, and a Sunscorch Regent All right. here. Not giving up on white now. Yeah, so... <laughs> His uh, his willingness to stick with white looks like it's going to be rewarded with the Sunscorch region, he, he which is a really powerful card. He doesn't seem completely convinced. Oh, he's he taking double it. white. If I'm, he I takes something else, I'll freak. I agree. But, I mean, yeah. he's still shuffling. He's looking at three WW. It's it true. It is double color. Let's think that if he wanted to move off of white, he would have done it. And if you're going to be white, be white. Sunscorch, Sunscorch region is just too powerful. And that's Every time your opponent casts a spell, it gets a counter and you gain a life. <laughs> I think it's huge. Oh, great card. The only drawback is the WW in the casting cost. Yeah. All right, so <laughs> if we're Jacob White Wilson, Dragons. we are fully committed at this point, and uh, we're basically at the mercy of the packs here. Uh, he is blue-white and unwilling to, to move from that, so right. whatever he gets, he gets. Scale Blessing is a little tricky to set up, but can be a good trick. Sandstorm Charger is solid. That might actually be my pick here. Oh, Zephyr Scribe. I, I'd take Zephyr Scribe, Zephyr I think, Scribe. out of this pack. I didn't notice that the first trip through. Yeah. And you're not, you're not at remotely tempted by a green dragon, right? I'm green not. White. Not by that one. Yeah, I think Zephyr Scribe, but you could certainly make a case for Sandstorm Charger. They're both very solid cards. And he goes with the Zephyr Scribe. Zephyr Charger, of course, is a looter, but it costs blue to do it, and... Uh, Turns out that's a pretty big cost. And there's another one, another as, long, as well as a Lightwalker Ooh, and an Ojutai's, Ojutai's command. command. That's pretty good. Ojutai's Command, pretty nice and limited, does, does good work. Uh, it'll be a really good pickup here for Jacob. <laughs> Involving Wilds, also relevant. I, th I would think it's Ojutai's Command here. I think so, too. I, it's interesting because, you know, if nobody else is actual blue-white, you could consider floating it out there and see if it comes back. Uh, I don't think it's worth the risk in this case. I think you just take it. It's, it's definitely better than the other options. It's, it's better enough than the other Agreed. options to worth just taking it. But that's pretty nice. Picks up a little blue-white rare there. Yeah, his, the, the, the peaks on his deck are quite high at the moment. Uh, the valleys are a little low. There's an anticipate. Oh, pacifism. geez. Well, think about what happened. I end the Student of Ojitai. I would yeah. think pacifism over Pacifism, student. it does get taken over it, but, uh, but Student of Ojitai is the one I mentioned coming into this pack, and that's a card that Jacob is really going to be keen to pick up a copy or two of if he can, but, of course, pacifism being one of the better removal spells in the format, he's going to have to take that here. Getting hooked up in white, though. 
Yeah, well, he didn't pass any of it. It's true. And we actually, if, if you were here earlier this morning, we watched Jensen's draft. Jensen first picked Anafenza, so he wanted to go white, but there was no white getting through him. He, oh, geez, here's Connie Breeze Keeper. Connie's Breeze Dancer? Breeze Dancer, yeah. dancer sorry. Mm -hmm. Lots of good stuff for him. Even a Gurmog Drowner, which yeah. is definitely something he'd like to have probably just one copy of. I don't think he wants to load up on those. He's not going to be uh, finding too many things that he wants to, to sacrifice in a deck like this. Has uh, he already he... got his dragon? He's not interested in another one? Breeze Dancer hits so hard. Breeze Dancer hits really hard. It's great at closing out the game. He's going in during victory. And I think what did he take in during victory? Yeah, I think okay. part of that is the thinking blue-white doesn't have access to a lot of removal spells. That's right. So you're not in a removal color getting access to the ability to destroy an attack. And it's an attacker or a blocker, so it's pretty much going to kill just about anything you care to and kill. The, and the bolster could be relevant, too. Yeah, it's a All real true. card. I like Ermog Drowner here, though. Radiant Purge is also sitting there. And mm -hmm. in, in this limited format, it actually doesn't do that much work. Would have been, right. pretty, been pretty good with uh, cards <laughs> around. But yeah, yeah I, I like the Drowner here. We may see some of that in Constructed. Yeah. Where you can still play with cons. That's right. Not in this timeline, though. No. All right, another Gadul Lurker here, and another, another Enduring Victory. Victory. Now, the first one is really nice to scratch off the list. The second one starts to get a little clunky. They are five mana. They are they five mana. Hold, hold a bunch. Now, Gadul Lurker, though, you know, right now, Jacob Wilson's deck looks a little bit disheveled. It's like, well, am I Gadul Lurkering and trying to kind of get <laughs> you and tempo you out, or am I the Enduring Victory deck that's kind of trying to sit back and, and wait for my dragons to show up? And yeah. well, that's that Victory. question. <laughs> Jacob Wilson preferring to be in a more controlling seat here. Wow, lots of blue cards, breath, although not of, Master. Them, not of them too good. Monastery Lore Master is solid, though. I think the first one of those uh, is something that you, you're pretty keen to pick up. Yeah, fills the curve as a megamorph. Yeah. The ability, if you get, if the game goes long, the ability can kick in. Yeah. I mean, I feel like there is a version of the blue white deck that's happy to get an Ojitai's Breath there. Jacob just doesn't really have that version of yeah, the Yeah, I think it's the version that takes the Gadul Lurker yes. instead of the Enduring. So. And, takes the, and takes the Light Walker. And, That's you right. Know, you can build an aggressive blue white, but you kind of have to get everything to come together just right. Yeah. Right? You've only got, you know, 12, 14 creatures in your deck, so you got to get a creature and you got to get the tricks. Yeah. You it also can be very good more, when it all comes together, but it's, yeah. it's risky. You want Ojatai Interceptor. You want the, um, you know, the, the cheaper two -time Pro Tour top eight. flyers. There's a scale blessing. Now, remember, he's already got a Mystic Meditation, and that card's already not that good. <laughs> so he's going to He just takes not prioritize that kind of thing, yeah. And 1-3 blocks reasonably. can fly over if that's Might just, what he's looking for. Could just cut the Pinion Feast. It does kill does. a lot of his cards. Solid sideboard card against a deck like Jacob, so he's pretty happy to see you know nobody show up with that. Oh, there's an Anticipate wow. that came back. That's nice. That is very nice. He gave a little look at the Ancient Carp, but uh, anticipates <laughs> really great. And what did he get here? Drowner? He did! Yes. Wow, Drowner that's a nice pickup for him. There's no, there's no exploit player. There's no blue-black exploit yeah. deck anywhere at the table. It feels like everybody kind of avoided it. It was there. There was, I mean, Cylindar Butcher isn't one of the premium cards for it, but it's one that you play and one that you Why? Well, the Butcher's wound up in Huey's deck. He's got double Butcher, but he's uh, black-red. Okay. I, I, Does he have I, dragon fodders? He did not wind up. He has a couple of emissaries. Okay. Well, that pack was great for Jacob. Yeah. I, the, the first two pack dragons was not good enough. Great, but he had enough, when you have enough dragons that you're passing dragons, you're like, I've already got two five mana dragons. Not interested in the six mana breeze dancer. Yeah. It's a decent spot to be in. Yeah. No, this came out pretty well for him. Those, it did. those uh, territorial rocks aren't super powerful, but will do decent work in his deck, just holding him alive. And double anticipate is going to mean that he's going to be finding those dragons a lot more often right. than somebody who doesn't get to run through, you know, a third of their deck. Yeah. It also lets him maybe cut a land, you know, get away with 17 land rather Good. than 18. He doesn't have to worry about that. It's either a land or a spell, depending on what you happen to need. Just, just a great card. I, I love the two dragons he has mm -hmm. too. They're both five mana. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, it's funny. I mean, I was making the case for finding the underdrafted color and moving in, but I mean, Jacob shows you sometimes you cut a color effectively enough, pass none of it, you get paid off in pack two. That's true. Where I don't think he'll get paid off, though, is nobody's going to pass him a white bomb here. I would be shocked if he got, right. you know, some sort of fate reforged white bomb. All right, I was looking for a Sandstep Outcast, yeah, and he found one, Young. but he also found Shu Yun and Misfire Adept in this pack. Jeez. So this is a real powerhouse pack for him. Now, he can pay for Shu Yun. Yes. I would think Shu Yun is the pick here. Yes. Misfire Adept's very good. 3-3 three, three giving things flying, but, I mean, Double Strike is better than flying. Yeah, it's a Shu little... Shu Yun is also cheaper. 3 power for 3 versus 3 mm -hmm. power for 4. It's a little awkward for him because he's really not a Shu Yun deck. 
right? Like, he is very much trying to sit back and resolve bombs. He's not trying to attack and give things double strike. But Xu Yun's so powerful right. that it still probably is the right pick you know here. what? Anticipate on turn four instead of turn two. It's fine. There you go. Like, anticipate and activate is a great turn four. Totally. Yeah. That's the thing is that if you have a Xu Yun in your opening hand, your deck is all of a sudden a beatdown deck. Exactly. <laughs> All right, he does take Shu Yun, and that brings us to... Sage, Frostwalker. Yeah, there's a Whisk Away. Sandblast. And a Sandblast. I like the Sandblast here, though. He is already pretty stocked up on effects like this. It, those are the five mana versions, though. That's Enduring right. Victory is just... The difference between three and five is huge. Sandblast is a cut above. I mean, Frostwalker and Jeskai Sage are solid as well. I'd, I don't know which of these cards I would take. Yeah, this is also a, a creature count question here for mm -hmm. Jacob. He did have a chance to take a look at his deck in between the last pack and this pack, and so he's going to know. Now, in a vacuum, I think Sandblast is the pick out of this pack, but... I, Frostwalker's really big. Four power yeah. on turn two. If if you th see yourself as a beatdown deck, if you want the ability yeah. to play as a beatdown I mean, deck, you Frostwalker can't even hits unit. super hard. No, it's fair. And yeah. so Sandblast is certainly the, I don't know, safer pick, the more consistent pick. Yeah. I like wow. it. Wow. Whoa, Reaper. And there's a Jeskai Sage Speaking as of well. beatdown creatures, don't you want the two one for one? I, th I think you just have the Jeskai Sage here. I think that Jacob is looking to block. I think he's looking to sit back. He's still going to be able to trigger the Sage, you know, a reasonable amount of time. He picked up either one or two of the Drowners. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the debate. Yeah, do you want the, you know, Savannah Lion equivalent? Or do you want the kind of combo-ish card? Yeah. I'm a big Jeskai Sage fan over the War Reaper here. I think that, you know, you get yourself to the later part of the game and you draw that 2-1 and you're like, well, this is not the yeah, card I wanted. And Jeskai Sage at least blocks and cycles. And it's also true that everybody else is playing all of their Sultai Emissaries, all of their Jeskai Sages. It, it's, it's not a great environment for 2-1 creatures. No, it's not. All right, there's a Ward Scale Dragon in there. I think right I into like, Being, though. I like Right into Being better here for Jacob's deck. Like you said, he's kind of dragoned out. Yeah, he's passed better six mana dragons. He has. And Right into Being's very solid. Uh, it, it's interesting because uh, with, with this type of pick, it's a spell, and, and it's also just a, yet another way for Jacob to manipulate his library to right. find those dragons. I mean, he's he's built an anticipate theme deck here. <laughs> he's got, he's got Ojitai, oh, he's which anticipates, <laughs> and uh, an actual two anticipates, and then Right into Being now is going to give him a little bit more. I like the Right into Being pick there. Yeah, that's a nice pickup for him, too. Yeah, he's got a bunch of ways to trigger prowess. I mean, totally. it's another another case for the Jeskai Sage, too, over mm -hmm. the, uh, the Woe Reaper. That's true. It does right. not appear to be a black-white deck either. Yeah, Harsh so what, what, what kind of a player around. are you, Jacob Wilson? There's a whisk away, <laughs> but he really is stocked up on those. But there's also a channel harm back there. If he wanted to go big, if he wanted that kind of big, unique effect, he could take it. Whisk away is a much more solid card. But he's already got two Enduring, and he's got the uh, the Sandstorm. The Sandblast is just going to take a little bit. I, I'm taking whisk away there. Channel yeah. harm. The fourth one's... Starting to get a little. You're going to leave six mana untapped no, against no, no, no. players I'm this not, good. I'm, this wasn't me making a stand for it. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. <laughs> I'm not a big channel harm fan. Is there another right to being in the middle of that? Yes, there is, and I don't it's know pick, why right? he's pulled that Rakshasa's disdain <laughs> to the front, but I would be pulling that uh, that right into being right right to the front of that pack if I'm Jacob. Same. It hasn't even made it, it to the front. Doesn't have a counterstall. Wow, Rakshasa's disdain. Over right into being number two. I mean, I guess he figures with these anticipates and stuff, he's going to, you know, have two to three cards in his graveyard just from having played a few spells early. Interesting. That is an interesting thing. And pickup. it is a bomb wow, for wow. cloud form here. Yeah, we said he wasn't going to get past white, but blue was available. Yeah. He's getting and, paid and off. And you were blue. right. The white has not been coming, but right. cloud form's fantastic pickup here. This is, you know, entering that middle part of the pack, and, and this isn't normally where you get your cloud mm -hmm. forms. It's usually like second or third yeah, pick you got him to vote, so... Really nice pickup for Jacob there, and it also goes well in his deck with the whole flying thing. Shu Yun pairs up with. It's just really good for, for him. Yeah, it's a great pick. Lotus right. Bastion, another fine card. Love that. Yeah, this deck really came together for Jacob. That second pack kind of propelled this deck, and, and this third one has really filled in all the gaps. Coming yep. out of the first pack, I, I would think that Jacob was, well, actually pretty sad. I, I think yeah. that that deck wasn't really coming together, and, no, he and would, now it's there. I think coming out of the first pack, he was like, was I supposed to hold on to Dragonlord Ojitar? Was I supposed to switch into black? It's yep. like he got he got white out of pack two. He's getting blue here out of pack three. His deck seems fine. Yep. Good even. Oh, very good. Yeah, I think this deck's very good. 
he has finishers, he has removal, he has a decent curve, he has ways to get through his deck so that he's not gonna just get, you know, short on mana or just not be able to play creatures. I, this deck looks super good. He gets another whisk away here. He's kind of got an embarrassing number of when it attacks or blocks <laughs> removal at this point. Right, wow, another Jeskai Sage. I was just thinking I would like another couple creatures in this deck. Agreed. Ideally another couple prowess creatures. Agreed. And how about a Jeskai Sage? It's a two drop, it's prowess, trades super effectively. Love the Jeskai Sage. Now it's two slot feels, instead of being creature light, it feels about right now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he could have got away without that. I mean, he anticipates, obviously, he can do that on turn two. But you'd rather, I think, build the board. So Jeskai Rune Mark. Or kill something you don't want to play against. Yeah. No taking dragons out of my hand. All right, Will of the Naga came back as well, and I think that that's a decent pickup for his deck. It gives him the ability to be a lot more proactive if he wants to. This, you know, sort of plays mm -hmm. into that Shu Yun role where right. he can just get beat down with the Jeskai Sages and such. Yeah, not a card that I think you always start. No, but you if don't. If you're going to start it, it's in, it's in the blue white beatdown deck, just like this one. Totally. You know, Ojutai's Breath might be better, but. Wow, yeah, that deck really came together. Uh, that deck really came those together. The last two packs were great. Yeah, that, that was one of those scenarios where it really did feel kind of iffy coming out of the first pack. Second pack solidified him, and the third pack was not a disappointment for him either, really hooked him up with the rest, so. Yeah, nice work for Jacob there. Um, I was worried, I won't lie. I was a little worried coming out of that first pack. I was thinking, you know, like he stuck to his guns and I get it, like it's a dragon with feathers, you wanna play it in your deck. Right. But, uh, but I really wondered, but like you said, going one direction, mm -hmm. no white cards. He got hooked up coming back the other way and also was fortunate to yeah, open a Yeah, and I think he knew box. that blue at least was open, right? He wasn't blue black to take maximal advantage of what was coming from the right, but he was blue and he got plenty in pack three. Yeah, that's right. So great draft there from Jacob. So. Uh, we're going to call it good here from the Tournament Center for Randy Bueller. I'm Marshall Sutcliffe.